Hey everyone, thank you for dropping by. So, I've been seeing questions about what team they should build, you know, uh, for the open world or for the abyss. So, that's what we're going to talk about. And once again, um, I want this to serve as a guide for you so you could make decisions on your own, you know, so you'd be able to tell if one character would synergize well with another. Um, if you remember in my first video, we talked about how the elements are also an elemental part of the game. Um, you know, the battles, the way we fight is dictated by how we manage to control or take advantage basically of the elemental reactions. So that's one thing you need to consider when it comes to team building. Also, because aside from the raw elemental reactions, we must take advantage of the so-called um, elemental resonance which you may have ignored when you started playing. Uh, but don't worry because um, I myself, I, I kept ignoring it too. And yeah, it's alright because you'd only really need or want to make use of these elemental reactions um, especially in the late game or when you enter the abyss. So this is Godric and let's talk about team building. I'm sure that you always notice the element symbol on your character or on the opponents so that indicates what current element is applied to you or the monster. Now. Once that and another element meets, an elemental reaction occurs. And one side note, the elements are color coded, be it you know the visions or the numbers on the screen, so you know what element is applied. And the white, of course, is the physical. So let's talk about them here. They're shown to you when you start the game, you know, the elemental reactions, when you trigger them, and if you've ever missed them, they can be seen on the tutorial section of the game. So let's talk about them one at a time. So freeze, this occurs when Hydro meets Cryo and it basically does what it says, you know, uh, it freezes your opponents. And then vaporize, this occurs when Pyro meets Hydro and it simply removes the currently applied element. And it doesn't have a damage on its own but it deals massive damage based on the triggering element. And then electro charge occurs when electro meets Hydro. So the affected player or monster will be shocked or temporarily stop moving and then receive electro damage over time. Next is overload and this occurs when electro meets pyro. So this produces an explosion and sends the affected player or monster flying away. And then superconduct. This occurs when electro meets cryo. So this reduces the physical resistance of the affected character or monster. Next we have melt. So of course, this occurs when you apply Pyro to Cryo, and similar to Vaporize, it doesn't have a damage on its own, but the damage is based on the triggering element. And then we have different reactions for um, Animo, Geo, and Dendro. So first is for Animo, when, when it meets the Pyro, Hydro, Cryo, or Electro, it produces Swirl. So depending on the Swirled element, it can also produce other reactions, and as I've mentioned before, this reaction is not affected by crit and you deal more when you have more attack and more affected monsters. Next is the crystallization which is produced when Geo meets Pyro, Hydro, Cryo, Electro. And you'll see crystals on where the reaction occurred. So you'll have a shield based on what element is affected by it when you pick the crystal up. And finally, the dendro element up to this point is still not exposed to players. We're only aware about the burning status which occurs when you burn or apply pyro to dendro monsters. And now we have the elemental resonance which is tied directly to team building. And you can see it here on the edit party page thing. So depending on what or who you put on your party, you'll have one or two elemental resonance activated. So choosing each character really matters, you know, if you really want to take advantage of this. And as I've said on my previous video, it's also advisable at times to bring two characters of the same element so they could serve as a battery and to fill the elemental resonance requirement. So you can see the effects of each one in this part as I'm showing you. So now that that's out of the way, let's try to build the teams. And I'll say it again, if your team is for overworld only, you don't need to sweat it, you don't need to stress yourself because you're free to mix and match any characters out there. But if you're preparing for a certain domain or say the abyss, you ideally want each character to have a role to play. So I'm mainly focusing on teams that we're going to use in the abyss here. So 
it's gonna be focused on you know uh min maxing your overall team damage so now including two characters of the same element is important for two reasons like i said before it's for the elemental resonance and for one of them to work as a battery and in case you don't know a battery in Genshin Impact is a character in your party that would act as a supplier of energy or the, you know, the orb or particles, either for the team or for one of your characters. This is usually the case for Favonius weapon holders because of its passive. So most of the time, your main DPS is the one that needs a battery or someone who you rely on for burst damage. Because normally, you rotate your uh, team, you use your skills or burst per character, right? So, you ideally want their burst to be available when you switch to them. So, your battery can fill any of the other roles as long as you utilize their skill and or the particle generation. Now, of course, you complete your party by having your sub DPS and or the supports. You could also have a team similar to a quick swap team where you simply use your skill or burst and swap to another character. So, overall, Familiarity with your character's kit is key in building your teams properly. And that being said, it's simply how you can build your team by making them complement each other. One example is the all 4 star team that's easily accessible for all. It's Xiangling, Bennett, Shengchu, and Sucrose team. And Bennett here acts as an attack buffer slash battery, also the healer. And Sucrose can use the thrilling tales of dragon slayers, so this buffs the attack of whoever you swap into. And then, she can also use the 4-piece Verdescent Venator set, so this reduces the resistance of whatever element is world. And then, both Xiangling and Xingqiu, they have off-field bursts, meaning you can swap to a different character and they would still work. Uh, not to mention that Xiangling's burst snapshots. And in case you don't know, snapshotting is a skill's property to, you know, retain the buffs that you gained on the initial cast. So for example, you cast Xiangling's burst on Bennett's circle burst and then Bennett's burst times out, right? So Xiangling's burst would still retain the buff for the whole duration of her burst. So another example is one well-known team which is Hu Tao, Sheng Chu, Zhongli, and Albedo. So obviously, Hu Tao and Sheng Chu here act as the main drivers with their consistent vaporized reaction. But with Zhongli's resistance shred, you know, to opponents, you technically deal more damage. And at the same time, when you use Albedo's Burst, your team gains an additional 120 EM. So that's another boost. And if you look at it, this team complements the main DPS, which is Hu Tao. So she can deal massive pyro damage from either her skill or her burst. And then with Sheng Chu, he consistently applies Hydro, therefore creating the vaporized reactions. So Zhang Li has a very strong shield and has crowd control through his burst. Both of which come handy since Hu Tao has better scaling at low HP, so you know she won't die easily. Also because Albedo works well as an off-field DPS, you don't need to worry about keeping your Hu Tao on-field, so they're consistently dealing damage. So yeah, after that, if you come up with team compositions of your own, you can try them out and make sure that you take advantage of the elements of the mobs so you can counter them in a way and capitalize on your elemental reactions you know if they don't work or it feels clunky you can change one or two of them of your characters and it's also important to be aware of each character's cooldowns and you know since when you do your rotations you want to uh, have enough energy for your burst or skill to be available yeah so to recap for overworld, it's generally free for all, so you don't need to worry or stress yourself out about your team. And for specific domains, opponents or the abyss, you should know the elements of the mobs or you know their uh, properties, so you can build your team based on that, so you could counter them. And then take advantage of the elemental resonance and elemental reactions. And lastly, test your team out. Swap some if it doesn't feel right. It's okay. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so I hope I was able to help you out, you know, give you an idea of how you can build your party on your own. So now I'd like to thank everyone who participated in our um, last Dwelkin giveaway from our last video. So you guys are here. <laughs> so let's choose our winner. 
who's it gonna be? Okay, so our winner is Job Macahor. Maka Core. How do you pronounce that? So uh, please uh, go to my about page here in my channel and contact me from my socials there so we can discuss how we could uh, you know give you your prize so if there's anything you'd like to know uh, let me know in the comments as always uh, please consider liking and subscribing so it could help me out you know bring more of this content to you and I'm always open to suggestions and clarifications so yeah thank you very much and I'll see you on the next one